Hey there, and welcome back to Unity and Connect. In the last video, we went over the basic Connect and Unity setup, and now we're gonna be going over the process of getting the body data as well as connecting prefabs onto each of the joints. And if you remember towards the end of the last video, I deactivated a bunch of the game objects for some of the Connect's output. I've gone ahead and deleted those objects and set up a new prefab that we're gonna be using for our hands. But right now our scene consists of the body manager, the body view, as well as a main camera. And today we're specifically going to be looking at the body view. The body manager is something that we're not going to need to touch, but it is what is actually getting the data from the connect. And for the prefab I mentioned earlier, it's just a sphere primitive with a 2D circle collider on it. And when we get to doing some of the interactions, you'll see why I used a 2D collider and did not stick with the usual mesh collider. So hopping into Visual Studio, this is the script that I showed you previously. It's the one that comes with the Connect SDK and draws all of the lines between all of the joints as well as the joints themselves. Now this is a fairly lengthy script for what it is. And what I'm gonna be doing in this video is simplifying and explaining the script so within your project, you can customize it the way you want. So let's go ahead and hop into that script now. So the first thing, is that we're using the Windows Connect namespace up at the top. And then we are setting joint to use the Windows Connect joint. And this is because Unity has its own joint class. And if you don't have this line in here, the compiler isn't going to necessarily know which joint you're talking about. In our two public variables, we're going to have a reference to the body source manager that I talked about earlier in the scene, as well as a reference to the prefab that I showed you as well. Then we're gonna have a dictionary of all of the bodies that the camera can currently see. Followed by that, we have a list of joints. And this is the list of joints that we will be connecting the prefab to. So moving down to the update method, this is where a lot of the actual work is occurring. And here you can see we are simply calling a function called get data on the body source manager. And then we're doing a null check to see if we actually have any data. But if there is data, we're gonna be going down to this for each loop below. But first we're gonna be setting up a list of U longs, which is going to contain all of the tracking ID values for the bodies that the connect can see. So within this for each loop, we're gonna go through all of the data that we are getting from the connect and we are going to be checking for the bodies within that data. And the first statement of this for each loop, we are simply checking to see if we have a body. And if we don't, we're gonna continue on and check the next piece of data within the array. If the body that we are checking is currently actively being tracked, we're going to add it to that list that is right above this for each loop. And we're gonna be using this list to check against the already existing bodies that are within the scene. So we're gonna be checking to see if we need to delete bodies as well as create new ones. So if we're moving down to the delect connect bodies region, we have this list, which is gonna be very similar to the list that was in the previous region that we're gonna be calling known IDs. And this is gonna be a list consisting of the keys from that bodies dictionary that I showed you at the very beginning. And then below, we're going through all of the known IDs and essentially cross-referencing it with that list from the get connect data section that I just showed you. And within this if statement, we're simply saying, if the tracked IDs list does not contain the tracking ID from the known ID list, then we are going to be deleting that body from the scene. Now we're gonna go down into the create connect bodies region, where the first thing that we have is a for each loop that is going through all of the bodies within the data that we got in the very first region, which is that source connect data. And like before, if we don't actually have any body data, we're gonna skip over this particular one and go to the next one. And what's happening in this if statement is that if the bodies dictionary does not contain the key of the tracking ID, then we need to create a new object for it to represent the body. And then once that body has been created, we are passing it to the update body object function. So let's go ahead and hop down to the create body object function. And notice that we're creating an empty game object. And then in the for each loop below that, we're gonna go through all of the joints that we had in that list at the top of the script. And we're gonna be instantiating an instance of the prefab that I showed you earlier as well that is also at the top of the script. We'll then be naming our new game object using the name of the joint. And then we'll be parenting that object to the body to keep our scene organized. And once we are done creating the body, we're gonna be returning it so we can assign it to that dictionary using the body's original tracking ID. And this enables us to be able to look up the actual body 
later using the tracking ID. So let's now move down to the update body object where we are passing in the body from that dictionary as well as the object that we just created. Now within the update body object function, we're gonna have this for each loop where we're gonna go through all of the joints and we're gonna be getting the position of each of those joints. So in the first line here, we are getting that body that we passed in and we are accessing the joints of it and we're passing in the joint type. And the joint type is an enum and we're passing it into the dictionary called joints that was in the body. So we're using that enum to look up that specific point within the dictionary. And then once we have that source joint, we're gonna get the vector three of it. And once we do that, we're gonna set the Z depth to zero. And that's because we want all of our play to essentially exist on the same plane. And then we're gonna use a transform.find on the body object to find the actual joint object that we created previously so we can set its position. And that pretty much does it for the update body object function. Now we're quickly gonna jump down to the get vector three from joint, which all we're really doing is we're passing in the joint object and we're multiplying all of its position values by 10. And I really don't have any reasoning for why this is happening. This is just what is standard within the connect code. So now we're gonna hit play and this is what you're probably going to see, which is you're gonna see three spheres that are following the left and the right hand joints as well as the head. And that is it for this video. If you liked the video, like the video. And if you would like to see the rest of the series, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next time.